Hey everyone, Rob Case here, Paddling Technique Coach. Today I'd like to look into a paddling technique I've been told recently about entering wide to get a more powerful stroke. So let's investigate this to see if this is a myth or a possible truth. The concept is this. Enter wide and then proceed through a motion similar to an hourglass. So let's first start with a question. How do you pull yourself out of a pool when you're not using a ladder? Do you place your hands wide or just in front of your shoulders? Now, I'm going to venture a guess that is normally a point somewhere in front of your shoulders. So why do we do this? Well, physiologically, we're strongest from just above the shoulders to just before our hips, with our arms pretty much as wide as our shoulders. In this power column, we can employ our big, powerful, and long-lasting latissimus dorsi and pectoralis major muscles. Ever tried getting out of a pool with your arms wide? doesn't work too well. It looks kind of funny. This is a particular problem if you have a longboard with a wider profile, one that is much wider than your shoulders. Entering wide and remaining wide, as we've already discussed, is at a disadvantage physiologically because we can't get as much engagement from our power muscles, but also biomechanically a disadvantage because you can't place the arm deep in the water, which is a key component of having effective propulsion. Lastly, because our power muscles aren't engaging as much when the arms are wide through the stroke, our smaller secondary and tertiary muscles take more load, such as the rotator cuff and surrounding muscle groups, leading to quicker injury. So I think we can eliminate entering our arms wide and keeping them wide through the stroke. But the original concept I was told is that you enter wide and then you move the arm into the center line as it progresses back through the stroke, like an hourglass or a letter Y. In this motion, the arms enter into that power column and then proceed backwards as we would want. But then I guess the question I have is, why enter wide and have to take time to move into the power column before moving the arms back? This is just an extra motion that doesn't add any value to our forward propulsion. So why not just enter in front of the shoulders and then proceed through the arm stroke within that power column, right under the shoulders, like we do when we get out of a pool. This is a natural motion for a reason. What if your board is wider than your shoulders? Then enter just outside the rail, as close to the power column as possible. If the board is too wide and you end up in the situation where no matter what, you can't get the arm back into the power column under the shoulders, I recommend getting a narrower board. You can make up volume and stability elsewhere in the design of the board if you need to keep those components. The more important factor is to prevent injury, sustain efficiency, and be able to add effective power in your paddling, which again is what we do most of the time when we're in the water. Paddling. So I think it's safe to say the entering wide myth is busted. Keep the motion simple. Enter in line with your shoulders and pull through in line with your shoulders or just outside the rail of the board on wider boards to obtain a more powerful stroke reduced potential injury, and increased efficiency. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you did and you haven't signed up for the free paddling email course, I think you're really going to like it. And if you end up liking that course, you're most likely going to love the level one paddling technique online course, walking you through the paddling techniques designed for all surfers from novice to professionals to enhance efficiency, increase speed and prevent injury. So until next time, I'll see you in the water.